We're joined now by Seattle Theater Group Executive Director Josh LaBelle. Welcome to the Morning Update Show. It's an honor to be here, Amari and, and yeah, Trey. Welcome. Thank you so much. Welcome. Glad to have you. Yeah, well, it's we're honored to have you. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like it's a reciprocal relationship yeah. here, man. I mean, first of all, what a beautiful building. Uh, you know, I've been here uh, a few times, but being able to come here the last few days and see it empty with all the lights on and everything else and move around and even go back to where the organ is at and everything. This is a beautiful building. Well, thank you very much. And and the building is yours, right? Mm -hmm. we, we are stewards here uh, of the historic Paramount and our, our whole idea, our vision, uh, something that we, we are aiming to achieve. We, we really work on every day is to try to be the people's theater, uh, a place that welcomes and represents everybody in our community. That's really good because we try to be the people station. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who represents everybody. So for people that don't really know that much about, a lot of people know the Paramount, but might not know a lot about Seattle Theater Group and what Seattle Theater Group does and what you steward. Maybe you can explain that. Yeah. Um, let's, let's talk sort of pre-COVID. Um, so Seattle Theater Group uh, owns or, or operates three historic theaters in our community, the Paramount, uh, which we own, um, the Neptune and the Moore theaters, which we which we lease. We produce a large amount of community and education, uh, education and community engagement programs um, that happen throughout the region um, that don't just center out of our venues, but happen in different places throughout the community. Um, we in in a typical time period we're serving about a million people mm. through about 700 performances uh at our venues sometimes we also present outside of our venues uh at smaller clubs uh on up to the gorge um our our idea is is to uh stay present in an artist's life from development all the way through uh when they can reach a, a really large arena um, we're, we're intentional about uh, having our, our, uh, our programming in lots of different sectors, whether it's Broadway, music, comedy, dance, silent film. Uh, that's all intentional because the idea is the, the, the broader we are, uh, the better shot we have at truly uh, achieving this vision of trying to be the people's theater and reaching as, as many people as possible, many different people as possible, but it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was, I mean, I was going to say that too, because I mean, some of this is about uh, having the right connections, right. In terms of finding talent and, and how do you guys go about approaching that in terms of like making sure that I'll say particularly the black community is engaged and involved with Seattle theater group. So, so, you know, our programming department, uh, you know, is really diligent right now. Uh, I think they've been this way for some time, but even more so coming out of the pandemic, uh, of being intentional in making sure that uh, we're programming a lot of black artists, uh, but also that's not enough. To, so to answer your question about how are we engaging with the black community, we've, we've started a new community group um, and bringing people together and simply you know, uh, raising things with this group, asking questions and listening. Uh, how can we better serve uh, the black community here? So we're largely there to listen and, and respond over time. We have uh, a real, real specific goal of making sure that we wind up serving a more diverse community from a racial perspective than, than King County's demographics. So we're, we're, we're measuring this um, and it's a, it's a new daily discipline mm -hmm. for me particularly. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that with, with the Paramount though, that it's it, at least my perception over the years, it isn't that you haven't had a lot of black acts, it's black communities access to the theater because the big acts come, you know, it's only so many places people are gonna go in Seattle anyway, when they're booking into Seattle, Paramount's always one of them. And so, I mean, <clears throat> Was it Ice Cube that was here? What when, when years ago? Wasn't Ice Cube here? I, I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I've heard this story about Ice Cube. That's yeah. prior to me being no, here. I remember. I, so the whole point is, is that black artists have come here. I think the thing is, over the years, 
was black promoters and, and people who want to do events access to the theater and other theaters. And, you know, I mean, I've seen that change over the years and more people have had access, but what are those kind of things? So there's one thing is programming, but another thing is access with the community having access to the theaters. A a absolutely. Uh, we want this to be the community's home. And so uh, if there's ever a perception that it's been difficult uh, for the black community to access this, a black promoter or whatnot, let me just address that today and say, uh, that will change, that's different. Uh, if, if you ever run into anything like that, I want to hear from you and I want to hear from you as well. And you will. All right. <laughs> um, well, I have a question too, because I think that you, you know, what, when you talk about coming out of the pandemic, right? I mean, really artistry event venues, they were hit super hard, you know, and we have seen this time and time again with a lot of different spaces that house artistry. How are you guys getting excited kind of about the, the opportunity to open back up and do some things, maybe learning from some lessons before the pandemic? Can I, can I jump in real quick? This is real important. Important here. Let me get this camera because Triana just said the possibility of opening back up. I want to be clear with everybody that today is the first act, the first thing that the Paramount has had since COVID. So we are open back up right here on the morning update show. Bravo. <laughs> Absolutely true. Um, and by the way, um, a performance will happen on August 21st with the Black Pumas. Uh, I think it's two nights, uh, 21 and 22. Um, uh, your question, though, uh, can you say that again? Yeah, I was just saying, what kind of things are you excited for now that, you know, you guys were shut down for a long time, probably in the, as I love to say, in the kitchen, cooking in the pot, right? You know, digging up some ideas about what you guys are going to do next once you reopen. And and I said possibility just because the Delta variant is out there. We've seen this fluctua fluctuation, but that hits, you know, big spaces like this often, or you have to change up. I know a lot of spaces are saying, come in, either be vaccinated or come with your, you know, uh, your proof of a test right. uh, that you don't have COVID. So, I mean, there's some adjustments there, but what are some of the things you guys are excited about? Um, uh, I'll, um, I'm going to speak personally, but also just, um, I, I have a, a good pulse of the organization and our management team. Um, I'm, I'm really excited that there is a commitment for us to work more with local artists coming out of nice. um, uh, coming out of this shutdown. Um, we, we've always worked with local artists and I think there is a real commitment to do more and very specifically work more with artists of color. Mm. Um, and I think if you see, if you take a look at the Neptune series that opened the Neptune, um, there's quite a few local uh, artists of color that wound up really grounding that, that series. And our last show was, I think, uh, last Saturday night, just this past Saturday night. The other thing that I know um, I'm excited about and our management team is excited about is there are sectors that are changing. So a lot of, I spend a fair amount of my time interacting with uh, different big picture sectors of performing arts. And Broadway is one of those sectors mm -hmm. I'm most intrigued about right now because I think Broadway has been through a very strong reckoning. And I have to give credit to the Broadway League that is uh, the service organization that, that represents Broadway in New York City, but also Broadway out on the road. Mm -hmm. Broadway is really important because um, very few people understand that in terms of performing arts centers or large venues like this across our country, approximately 40% of the revenue that they're reliant upon comes from Broadway. Mm. Broadway has not been uh, serving the black community uh, all that well. Let's just admit that. Um, and, and I do believe that that is changing. Um, and I think in the next five years, you're gonna see a fair amount of, uh, of new shows that really uh, are brought to the stage with the black community, with more black artists. And hopefully this also changes the population coming to the theaters as well. Nice. Um, yeah. But it, it's also important, and I want you guys to know, because you are a media company, there is a commitment 
um, that is not solid yet, but I believe that when it comes to marketing dollars, um, which is a substantial amount of marketing dollars are spent on Broadway across the country, I believe the vast majority of markets will, will be making a commitment uh, that a reasonable percentage will be spent on locally, uh, locally independent uh, media that is owned or operated by communities of color. Oh, um, that's good. And that's going to change. Um, I, I, I really hope that, that that would help a company like Converge. And I also really hope that that helps us reach new audiences. Yeah, being intentional is good. Yeah, yeah. And, and I like what's on your website. Like, you know, uh, the what is the, the theme there, right? Right. <laughs> Uh, the theme on the website, right, right. right I go to that homepage. Dreaming the revolution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, but if we're not intentional about joining, right. joining you. Yeah. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Well, right. I, I will, I will say this though, is that, um, and I really have to acknowledge some of the staff here uh, at STG um, and Mary Saul being one of them and a few other people, because, um, the relationship between Converge and STG and Paramount, it didn't start here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, we're, we're, we're here today, but it really started with the intentionality of Marisol and, and, and discussions and everything else. And the, the production you guys had, Elevate. Yep. And Elevate, if, if I could share this with the audience, you know, Elevate, a great, sh a great show, great programming and everything else. And it was it was really about uplifting and elevating these black youth, um, or, you know, spoken word and some of everything else. And this was the middle of COVID. Nobody had any resources or anything. And, you know, just talking to Marisol, I was like, man, this is a great program. How, how can we how can we literally elevate it? How can we get them on air? How can we do everything else? But, you know, I mean, I, I, I just say all that to say that sometimes big steps in relationships just start with small conversations. And it was just, you know, Marisol, I didn't I didn't know her all. just reached out and said, hey, you know what? I just want to talk to you. And here we are months later now, you know, sitting in the Paramount. So things things do change. One Absolutely. conversation at a time, one person at a time, everything else. Another thing I'll say is. As far as theater, right? When we was growing up, we ain't had no TV. Our mom was like, you guys going to be reading. It. We ain't had no TV, but we had radio. And so we used to listen to radio theater. And the radio theater, we listened to La Miserable. And yo, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's Jean Valjean. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it was crazy because I knew the whole story of La Mis through radio. And then I saw it here in the theater. And I was like, wow. And it was, man, it was like, it was transformational automatically. I just became a theater head. You know what I'm saying? And so like COVID, I was, I was like checking out shows and everything because it's so amazing to see a live show on the stage. And so when you're talking about one Broadway shows in general, you know, uh, hopefully coming back soon, but then shows in the near future that are more representative of our community. I think that's going to be transformational, especially for young people. Yeah. And I got to say here too, Omari surprised me with our names on the marquee and I grew up a theater kid. Okay. I grew up a theater kid. Uh, uh, Felicia loud. That's a uh, half of black stacks was my mentor in theater. And I seen her, uh, downtown at one of the big theaters, um, in roll of thunder here, my cry when I was in the fifth grade and it set me off to go into theater, to be an actress, to be on the stage. And so honestly, this means a lot to me. And I agree a hundred percent with what Omari is saying, because really for us, it's about having shows that also represent our lived experience and having curators of shows like Elevate that are really there to be like, no, nah, we're connecting all of this amazing talent to these amazing venues. So I'm looking forward to it, Josh. We'll see how it shapes up. Well, I really, I'm touched that you both shared that and just want to say thank you. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah nah. There's a lot we can do together. <laughs> yeah, we, we got you. you. Know? I mean, There's a lot we can do together. I think that, I think that as well. And, you know, I mean, we can't, you can't be the head of, of STG and, you know, the stewards of these iconic theaters without us asking these kind of tough questions about community and things like that. But I also, because we need to break, we got some live performances coming, but I also want to be very fair and objective to say that, like, the staff here at the Paramount and STG, 
even from months ago through today, through stage setup and everything else, have been, we've used the word a lot today, but very intentional in, in the way that they've worked with Converge. And I never forget that we're the, we're the little engine that could in this city. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're just a little, we're the, probably the newest and smallest media company. You know what I'm saying? And so I never forget. I, I tell people all the time, I, I got the memory of an elephant when it comes to acts of kindness. I never forget that, like, you know, we're the little guys out here and these relationships and we're here in the Paramount. So thank you. Well, you you may see yourself as the little guys. We don't. I, th I, th I think it's really important that you understand um, we see our health so connected to your health um, and, and your success and your growth. And I know that we could uh, be better partners to you and, and do more together and know that you've got my commitment. It's not just Marisol. It's, it's everybody that's here. That means a lot. All right. Good Thanks, stuff. Josh, Josh LaBelle, <laughs> Executive Director, Seattle yeah. Theater Group. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you both. Thank you both.